Hi, this is Jonah with the Home Theater DIY. Today we're going to go over how to set up the Logitech Harmony Hub. This is what it looks like. It's, it's pretty small, fits in the palm of your hand, and uh, it's a pretty neat device. It turns a smartphone or a tablet into a universal remote. It actually works with Alexa and I believe Google Assistant as well. So here's the box it comes in. It's uh, right there. It says it controls up to eight devices at a time. So this hub right here can control eight different devices. So a TV, receiver, Fire TV, Apple TV, projector, all these different things, and it sends out these IR commands. It also works with different smart home devices, so light bulbs, uh, thermostats. It can control those as well, but I wouldn't suggest using it for that. So the hub is actually powered by a micro USB cable, and it has two different IR ports on it. So what you'll do with those IR ports, it comes with an IR blaster. So if you look at this right here, that's an IR blaster. There's multiple IR um, transmitters on this. It's going to send out a bunch of IR commands to try and reach all your devices. It plugs in with a cable like that. kind of looks like a, an aux cable, just there's only one ring on it. So that's the blaster that comes with it. Here's an IR, uh, we call an IR emitter. It's really much, much smaller, and this would fit right on the front of a device. So if you go to your receiver, it has a little double-sided tape on the back of it. You stick that right over where the, the IR sensor is, and it'll send a command directly to that device. You don't have to worry about you know the IR signal hopefully getting to it it's actually going to go directly to it it's a much better way to do it and then so since there's only two different ports if you have more than two devices you want a direct connection to you can use what we call an IR connection block and if you look in here it's not focusing too great but you can see that there are five different or there's actually six different emitters on here so you have one incoming connection and it sends out to six different connections so you could just use a single cable running from the hub to this connection block and then six different cables going out to all your different devices. All right, so in this setup, we're gonna use the Harmony Hub to control a Denon AVR889, a Mitsubishi HC4000 projector, and a Fire TV. So the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna use the IR blaster to get the signal to the AV receiver, and then I'm gonna use the hub itself, which has IR blaster on it, I'm gonna blast it to the projector, which is actually behind the camera. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show how that works. All right, so how we're gonna do this is I have the hub right here, and I'm gonna set this up right on top. And from right here, this should be a good enough line of sight to get to the projector. So it actually has a higher blaster on the front that will reach all the way to the projector. And then I have this one right here, which is plugged into the back of it. I'm gonna set this right here. Yeah, it, it's not entirely ideal, but um, what you can do is you can buy the correct size connector, the ones I didn't have, and plug that into the back and set it directly on there. But right here will work just fine for demonstration purposes so you can see how it works. And usually we have pictures up here so it would actually hide pretty well if I just set a picture right in front of here and it would, it would hide everything perfectly fine. So next I'm going to show you how to locate the IR receiver on a device. So here we have the Denon AVR889 receiver and I'm going to take my flashlight and turn it on. So I'm going to start scanning over the display, and on the right you'll see a big rectangle, which is where the normal information is shown, and on the left you'll see a tiny little transparent circle. That's actually where the IR receiver is hidden. So if you're using an IR emitter, you want to place that directly over it, or if you're using an IR blaster, just make sure it has a decent line of sight to it to ensure a great signal is received. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is go through the configuration of the hub. So as you can see, I have my phone here, and I did a screen recording of this. I'm going to blur out the password to my Wi-Fi. I doubt anyone's going to come to my house and try and log in, but better be safe than sorry. So I sped this up here. It took quite a while for it to connect to the wireless network for some reason. And then next you'll be prompted to sign up or log in. So I actually already have an account set up with Google. So if I go there, it'll pull up my email, and then I'll just select my email. If you don't have that already connected, then um, you'll have to sign up and create a new account. So license agreement, we'll click accept. And then now we're gonna add it as a new remote. That was that bottom button right there. 
So next it's going to bring up two different items, the hub and the IR mini blaster. And it's basically just a little bit of product info on each product as to what it can do and what its capabilities are. So you may or may not see this next screen. Um, go ahead and hit set up new if you do. And then I'm going to disable all of these. I'd rather manually enter in all of the different devices. So I start off with Denon AVR889, which is the receiver we have. And then when you add it, it also gives you the option to rename it. If you have multiple receivers or anything like that, you can always just rename it right there. So now we're going to add our next device, which is the projector. It's a Mitsubishi HC4000. So you see, you type it in there, and then you click Add. And you can also rename it if you'd like to. And then now we're going to add our last device, which is the Fire TV. Now this one is actually a little different. It doesn't use IR commands. It actually connects via Bluetooth. And once added, it gives you the instructions on how to connect it through Bluetooth. And this one actually took me a few tries to do. I actually had to restart the Fire TV in order to get it to connect properly. But once I did that, it seemed to be working just fine. So now we have all of our devices added. It's time to test them. So if we go to the next page, it's a power on slash off test, which allows us to power on and off both the projector and the receiver to make sure the IR commands are getting sent properly. All right, so as you can see, the projector is powered on and it's on the Fire TV screensaver right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the phone and we can see the option to power off the Mitsubishi projector. If we press off, it's gonna send a double power command to turn off the projector. Most projectors you have to press power, then power again to initialize the shutdown process. And as you can see it worked, the projector's powered off, and it's going through that process now. So next we're going to test the power off and power on commands with the app. And as you can see, I have the IR blaster set up in front of the AV receiver. The receiver is currently powered on. So I'll take my phone and right where it says Denon AV receiver, I'll press the off button. And as you can see, it powers off the receiver, no problem at all. Let's give it a second and then we'll test the on command. And the light turns green, screen comes on and powers on the receiver successfully. So now both the power off and power on commands work for the receiver. So now that we've tested everything, we're going to add an activity. What an activity is, is basically a set of commands to turn on different devices, set their inputs, and have everything ready to go. So as you can see, one of the activities is Watch Fire TV, and it incorporates the projector, the receiver, and the Fire TV. So when you do this, you want to make sure everything's powered on. And right now everything is, so you hit My Devices are on. That's going to go to the next page. And now you're going to set the input settings. So for the projector, we're not going to set any input. We don't change that. We only do that through the receiver. Then for the receiver, we're going to set it to whatever input the Fire TV is connected to. So for this case, it's HDP. We have it renamed as Fire TV. All right, so now we're testing to make sure that we have audio and video coming from the projector and speakers. And we do, so I hit yes. And now, this is where I had issues with the Bluetooth pairing to the Fire TV. This actually took a little bit of time. Like I said, I had to restart the Fire TV in order to get it to connect properly. But after I did that, it seemed to be working just fine. So now that we're successfully connected to the Fire TV, we want to test the activity to ensure it turns everything on and everything off properly. So as you can see, I have the projector and the receiver both on right now. I hit test now and it should begin powering down both the projector and the receiver. And as you can see, the projector powers off and the receiver standby light goes to red. So that means that both of those have powered off and then it's actually gonna start powering everything back on. The receiver turns back on, as you can see the lights come on, but the projector isn't gonna accept that power command because it's in a shutdown process. It actually takes quite a while for a projector to properly cool down and completely shut off. It's kinda like a computer, it takes a little bit. So now it's asking us if the Fire TV activity turned on correctly. We're going to hit yes, even though the projector didn't power back on. That's not the activity's fault. That's the projector itself. So here is the activity summary. This is pretty cool. It allows you to edit a few different things, and it gives you a little more functionality. First being the start sequence, which is powering on the projector, receiver, Fire TV, and setting the input for the receiver. Then there's the end sequence, which is powering off the projector, receiver, and Fire TV. Uh, next one being schedule, so you can actually set it to turn on and turn off at a certain time of the day, and you can also set the days of the week that this activity runs. 
and then connectivity is the last one if you ever have any issues with the bluetooth pairing to the the hub and the fire tv you can always just go back there and repair them so we basically finished the entire setup now when we hit exit setup that's going to lock in all the configuration settings and it's it's actually going to take a little bit i sped up the clip here a good amount because it took about a minute or so to completely do all this and now we're back at the activity homepage with our watch fire tv activity completely configured and ready to go all right so now for the fun part we're actually going to use the activity so when i hit watch fire tv on the app it's going to begin the process and start the projector the receiver and the fire tv boot everything up i sped up this process uh, a whole lot because it takes about three minutes or so for my projector to completely boot up and for the screen to actually be visible but as you can see, the remote control automatically pops up on the screen. That is the Fire TV controller. So I can use the right arrow, the down arrow, OK, home button, menu, all that stuff, and it works great. It's very responsive. It, it moves pretty quick. Next, we're going to switch to the receiver, and we're going to test the volume up and volume down. And as you can see, when I press the buttons, the volume ramps up and down. We know that those are working, so that's good to go. So there's a couple more things you can do inside of the activity. One being gestures, which is the little pointer icon. And basically it's uh, either using one or two fingers. You can control volume, you can actually control the Fire TV controller, all of that stuff just by using the swipe of one or two fingers. And uh, it's pretty neat. If you don't like using the control, this could actually be a lot quicker than having to swipe through a few pages of controls to, you know, navigate and move everything around next is the keyboard tool you can actually type in something and then send that directly to the device uh, this actually didn't work for the fire tv but it may work for other devices i'm not sure and the last one is the help tool so if something's not powering up properly input isn't set properly or you just want to modify some of the activity settings you can do that right here so the last and final thing we're going to go over are the customizable buttons. So when you're using an activity, if you look at the bottom there, those are the customizable buttons. In order to change those, you'll press the menu button, then you'll press edit slash reset, then edit buttons. And when you go through here, it gives you an option to delete the buttons. You can add new buttons there at the end with the plus sign. And right here, I'm basically just going to add the volume up, volume down, and mute volume. I'm going to add all of those at the bottom. Uh, otherwise, if I didn't do that, then I would have to scroll over to the next page in order to volume up or volume down. And this would make it a little bit easier and a little more uh, compact. So that's the nice thing about the buttons. You can uh, kind of configure it however you want. The front page isn't fully customizable, but the second page you can rearrange the buttons however you would like to. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it was able to explain the Harmony Hub a little bit and how the configuration of it works. It's really not that complicated. If you would like a text and image based tutorial, I have that on my website. If you look down in the description, you'll see a link to that. Also, if you need a Harmony Hub, then go on Amazon and they actually have them for about $99. And during the holidays, they kind of uh, fluctuate in price a little bit. I, saw, I actually saw it for as low as I think it was like $55. So maybe on sale now, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. If you want to see more from this channel, please click subscribe. Thank you for watching.